Hi there! If you're new around here, my name is Heather and I am an amateur photographer and explorer. I thought it would be fun to start to film videos on the places that I go to take my pictures. Do you like cemeteries? Hopefully a few of you do because that's where we're at today. Today I am doing a cemetery crawl in Washington, Pennsylvania at Washington Cemetery. This was one of the first cemeteries I started coming to visit to take pictures and just look around. I like going to cemeteries because this is our history and because I find old cemeteries to be very beautiful. So I thought I should just start documenting these places because they are not going to be around forever. A lot of these stones are really worn away and starting to fall apart. Some of them aren't even legible anymore, so I thought it was important to film them while I can. So if you like cemeteries and you want to see me travel across the country and go to different ones and film them and check them out, then subscribe to this channel and keep on watching this video. So the first cemetery find I wanted to share with you all is this white bronze monument. This is not actually made out of bronze, it's made out of zinc. These were marketed as a cheaper alternative to traditional granite and stone tombstones. They're actually hollow, but they still hold up really well to time just as was advertised. These were mostly popular in the 1880s until about 1900, and then whenever World War I started, they ceased production so the zinc could be used for the war effort. These were really neat because you can go through a catalog and pick different designs, and they were each made to order for the family, so every single one of them is unique. So this is one of the popular spots here at Washington Cemetery where lots of people like to get their picture in front of. I actually got a picture taken here for photography class in high school on one of those old black and white film cameras. It didn't turn out very well. So for some reason, there is just a random piece of a headstone laying here. Um, there doesn't seem to be um, anything else left, so I'm not sure if there was a monument here and it all just kind of fell into the ground over time. It looks like it was beautiful, it had a wreath on it. Here we have the graves of two children, which is always very sad. So I thought this was quite a sad sight. Um, here is a headstone for their little one who is named Preston. And Preston's little lamb is just laying in the ground. He just fell over. Toppled monuments are unfortunately a pretty common sight here and I would just love to be able to come here one day and fix them up. Like I want to learn how exactly uh, you get involved with something like that because I love this place so much and I would just be so happy to be able to fix it up. I mean look at that, they're just on the ground. <laughs> Like surely there's a way to fix that. And I know there's a lot of things here that have just been on the ground for years. This is the grave of a Gettysburg soldier and 
I seem to visit this grave a lot because his flag is always on the ground and anytime I see that happening here, I do my best to fix these flags. So as I was editing this video, I decided to do a little bit of research into who this soldier was and his name was David Atchison and his image is actually up on Find a Grave along with the story of what they had to go through just to get his body back. And I'm actually a little bit emotional over this one because he was only 22 years old whenever he died in the Battle of Gettysburg. He was a Civil War Union Army officer and he served during the Civil War as captain and commander of the Company C 140th Pennsylvania Volunteer Infantry. He was killed in the woods north of Stony Hill by two shots from men of the Confederate 3rd South Carolina Infantry. The intense fire from the Confederates forced his men to leave his body amongst the rest of the dead and wounded in the area. They tried going back the next day and they were driven back by rebel gunfire. His remains were located and interred in a grave and to mark the site, one of his men's carved the initial DA in the boulder at his grave to help locate his body whenever his family came to retrieve it and to take it home to Washington, where he was buried on July 15, 1863. Five years later, members of Company C revisited the site, deepened the carved initials, and added 140 PA. This inscription could still be seen today in Gettysburg National Military Park. That just makes me so emotional for some reason, and I will eventually make it out to Gettysburg, and maybe I will find the place where he was originally buried. Well, this person lived to be 92 years old and they died in the 1860s. I think they did pretty good for back then because a lot of people that are buried here are very young. Let's see what year. 1864. Dear Savior, be my constant guide. Then when the word is given, Bid the cold waves of death divide and land me safe into heaven. This is such a sad sight. Oh, we have visitors. <laughs> So the deer here are actually extremely friendly and people feed them, though I would not recommend actually approaching them because you just shouldn't be approaching wild animals. Um, but there was actually a local man who got prosecuted for coming here and shooting one of the deer. And he actually got in a lot of trouble because they're technically protected in here and because it's not actual hunting grounds. So it's a cemetery, it's a public area where people are walking. And uh, it's not a good place to be doing stuff like that. So someone actually got in trouble for that, which I think is pretty good. So I wanted to show you one of my favorite monuments here. This is the resting place of Maddie McCoy. And she was born December 12th, 1851 and died in 1877. What I really like is all the hidden hand symbolism on the side. In the summer of 1852, Miss Sarah Foster Hanna, president of the Washington Female Seminary, took it upon herself to lead an effort to establish a new cemetery in the Washington, Pennsylvania region. Encouraging the local townspeople that a proper final resting place was crucial, she organized the purchase of property for a new site. Easy access from town and country, the elevated land selected for the cemetery had a spectacular scenic view overlooking the beautiful town of Washington, Pennsylvania. A board of managers was organized for the newly established Washington Cemetery Company on March 3, 1853. 
So this is actually my favorite spot in the whole cemetery to watch the sunsets. I come out here and I get some really cool shots of these old twisty trees. So here is the other family plot. This is for the Brownlee family. So here's another favorite spot of mine in high school photography class. This is actually one of the first things I fell in love with here. And one of the only photos I had that turned out okay, though I don't have that picture anymore. And our dear friends um, are not too happy that we are over here, so I'm trying not to startle them. What I really like about this one is the urn with the flame coming out and the sun on top. And that is on every single one of these. Please don't attack me. I don't mean you any harm. I'm just walking around. So I'm about to show you guys my favorite spot in this entire cemetery. This absolutely makes my heart melt. This is an eternal symbol of the bond between man and dog. This is a cute little dog that I believe is looking at his owner's grave. That's the only thing I could think of. It makes sense. Every time I'm here, I end up getting a picture with this guy. I really need to learn what's going on with this. Every time I'm here, I come here and I give him some pets. Because <laughs> he's a good boy. So you're probably thinking, Heather, that's a really cool old cemetery, but what is the oldest grave there? Well, I believe I may have found it. And I'm just taking a wild guess here because in all my times wandering around this place, I have never seen a grave older than this one. So here is the grave that I found whenever I was here the other day. So the plaque on top says Thomas Scott, and it says removed from Washington Graveyard, April 26, 1909. So what I'm going to guess happened was that his family had him relocated here to Washington Cemetery, maybe to be by other family members. So this tombstone is actually from 1796. And it reads, in memory of Thomas Scott, who departed this life on the second day of March, 1796, in the 58th year of his age. And he was actually a Revolutionary War soldier. So what this just reminded me of is the fact that um, last year I actually was able to trace back my family to the Revolutionary War and I figured out who my ancestor was but unfortunately I can't find where he's buried so in a future episode we're actually gonna go on a quest to find my ancestor and that's gonna be a really cool day. The cemetery is massive and there's a lot to see here but we're running out of daylight So here's one that I really want to show you guys. I found this on my last trip here, and I just think it's so beautiful. The stonework on this is really, really nice. And unfortunately, it's really getting destroyed. It could be because of whenever they mowed the grass, maybe it got all chipped up, or because it's on the ground, and monuments on the ground tend not to hold up very well.
This is absolutely beautiful. There is a tree on one side and some sort of plant on the other. And then there's a beautiful poem on there. Unfortunately, it's all messed up so I can't actually read it. I really like that hourglass up there. So as a photographer, one of my favorite things to take pictures of is photos of cemetery hands. <laughs> I just think they're really cool. So for some reason, every time I post a picture that has this font on dyed, people have a lot to say about it. <laughs> it is really eye-catching and unexpected for a cemetery though but that's just one of the styles they used back then. And you can see this stone is getting ready to fall off. You actually need to be really careful when visiting historic cemeteries because unfortunately, a lot of the grounds and the monuments haven't really been maintained and tended to. They can fall over on you and injure or kill you. So just be mindful of where you're stepping. Uh, I've fallen. Uh, knee deep into groundhog holes. <laughs> Here's another one I found on my last visit that absolutely gave me chills. So on the top there are little empty boots and little socks hanging over and I just think that's so incredibly sad. So it looks like it is a pile of like bricks or like a little wall sitting on top of a log and there is ivy going up the side and there's the little boots and their little socks and i can't actually read uh, the date on it that well i think it says 1883 it could say 1888 can't really read it on the top of this grave, there is an image of a small child laying on a little pillow and once again, extremely sad. Graves for children are the ones that, um, they just give me chills. They make me very sad because you think of a life cut so short and it's very sad. So I know I always say that I feel like I was born in the wrong time period because I've always just been drawn to historic places, but visiting places like this actually makes me feel grateful for the century I was born in because um, I'm sure that a lot of the people that died here died of preventable diseases, <laughs> things that you just don't hear about anymore today, things that people don't usually die from today. And so I definitely really appreciate the fact that I'm alive now and I have this whole big life ahead of me, hopefully. And I feel like visiting these places kind of makes you appreciate uh, your life a little bit more and it makes you appreciate what life's all about. This place is a place of love. People left markers for the people they love and that's what's the most important thing in life. It doesn't matter how much money you have. It doesn't matter how famous you are. In the end, you end up right here on the ground. You know, what matters is living your life, making memories, the people that you love. The little things are what matter the most. And I really wanna encourage you guys, if you don't think about that kind of thing already, start thinking about that. Start appreciating the people in your life, your friends, your family, your pets, because you just never know what could happen. And that's what I think about when I'm in places like this. So there is a lot more to see here at Washington Cemetery. This place is massive, but unfortunately, due to my little detour getting lost on the way here, um, we don't have much time until close. I have to get out of here in the next 15 minutes. So I thought I would finish off this little tour by showing you guys the monument they have for the world wars here. 
So on this side, there is a monument for World War I. Well, everyone, that's all the time we have here at Washington Cemetery in Washington, Pennsylvania. Um, this cemetery is huge. There's so much here. I wish I could show you. But if you want to come check it out, <laughs> now you know about it. You can come see it and uh, walk around here, take in the history. Washington is a town with a ton of local history, so it's a neat little place to check out for a day for sure. I want to thank you guys for um, coming here for this cemetery series. My next video will be a little bit more pulled together. This was kind of done on a whim. I decided just to get out and film this. So if you want to see more of this series and if you want to see me travel to weird and interesting roadside places, uh, be sure to smash that like button. And if you would like to see my cemetery art, please follow my Instagram at Heather Explorers. There you can see the pictures I take in places like this. And that's my hobby, that's what I do, that's my thing. All right guys, it's been fun. I'll see you in my next vlog. Bye for now.